Mary the little snail and Dolly the ladybird play with their forest friends in their happy little world. Dolly the ladybird and Mary the little snail always fun games to play, always a brand new tale. Mary and Dolly say, what will we learn today? The kite. Berry the snail was still asleep when Dolly the ladybird knocked on his window. Good morning, Berry. Let's make a kite. Dolly drew a kite and Berry cut it out. They decorated it with colourful ribbons and then they tied it to a long piece of string. Let's see if it flies, Dolly said. They took each other's hand and set off to fly their kite. But no matter how hard the two of them tried, the kite just wouldn't fly. I'll climb up this tree and try it from there. Maybe then it'll fly, Dolly explained. But the kite just fell to the ground again. All of a sudden, the wind blew up and carried the kite away and took Dolly with it. Berry! Help! Berry climbed up the tree and grabbed Dolly's feet. But he couldn't pull her back. So now the two of them were flying. Balthazar the bee flew by. He caught hold of Berry's feet, but he couldn't pull the kite back either. So now the three of them were flying. Eddie the potato beetle was sitting on top of a pine tree. He caught Balthazar's feet. So now the four of them were flying. Leapy, help! Balthazar cried to the grasshopper, who was just hopping by. Leapy caught Eddie's feet, so now the five of them were flying. The wind got stronger and stronger. Flutter the butterfly flew by. She caught Leapy's feet, so now the six of them were flying. Stanley the stag beetle and Zephyr the dragonfly looked at their friends in despair. got tangled in the top of a tall tree and they landed in the treetops. The wind died down and the sun came out. Berry gave the ladybird a worried look. Dolly, I can't fly. How am I going to get down from here? Don't worry, Berry. I'm sure we'll think of something. I know what to do. Jump into this blanket, Berry. Don't be afraid. You won't hurt yourself. Berry jumped down into the blanket and bounced back up in the air. Look at me. This is fun. We want to try, the others shouted. The little friends jumped up and down on the blanket until it got dark. Long after they were all in bed asleep, the wind blew up again and carried the kite far, far away. Berry and Dolly say, what will we learn today? 
Christmas. It was a crisp winter day and Berry the snail and Dolly the ladybird went into the woods to look for a bunch of Christmas greenery. Look, Berry, this little tree got knocked over in the storm. Let's take it home. We can decorate it for Christmas. Hooray! We'll have a real Christmas tree, Berry shouted. They lifted the tree up and saw a centipede sheltering under its branches. Help me, Berry. Let's put him on the sledge. He's hurt himself and looks very cold. We can take him to my house. They lifted the centipede carefully onto the sledge. Will he be all right? Berry worried. Of course he will, Dolly reassured her friend. When they got home, they put the poorly centipede to bed. Dolly made him hot tea and Berry read him caterpillar stories from a storybook. Next morning, the centipede opened his eyes and smiled a little smile. He got better every day and soon he was healthy again. Dolly asked him to stay. You're so nice. Don't go, centipede. Spend Christmas with us. Well, thank you. I'd love to stay. But what should we get him for Christmas? Dolly wondered. What would make a centipede happy? Dolly told him her idea. The little snail nodded excitedly. Berry and Dolly went to see the ants. The queen ant welcomed them with open arms. Dolly told them what kind of present she thought of. We can make anything you want, said the queen. Christmas came and Berry and Dolly made a tree stand. As night fell, Berry gave Dolly her present. Merry Christmas, Dolly. Thank you, Berry, the ladybird said. She was delighted. It's beautiful. Dolly was very happy and wound the pretty ribbon around the tree. Merry Christmas to you too, Dolly said, and handed Berry his present. Sparklers, super, let's put them on the tree. They lit the sparklers and crackling sparks danced around the Christmas tree. The glittering light attracted lots of tiny fireflies and each brought a Christmas decoration. Even the centipede helped to trim the tree. Soon the ants arrived carrying a parcel. They handed it to Berry and Dolly. This is our present to you, centipede, Berry said to him. Merry Christmas. Boots, he shouted happily. They'll keep your little feet warm when you're walking in the snow, Dolly explained. The friend's celebrations went on late into the night. There was Eddie the potato beetle, Stanley the stag beetle, Alfonso the cricket and Rosita the rose beetle. The fireflies built a big snowman with the little ants. They all sang and danced around the Christmas tree. Flutter the butterfly came to celebrate with them. Zephyr the dragonfly danced with Leapy the grasshopper. Berry and Dolly skipped around with Balthazar the bee. When the party was over, the centipede cleaned his boots and put them on a shelf. What a wonderful day I've had. It's a shame that Christmas only comes once a year. The Hot Air Balloon One summer afternoon, a storm blew up in the forest. Dolly the ladybird and Berry the snail sat watching it from the spotty house. The wild wind twisted the trees and blew the roofs off houses. The rain came down in buckets. 
When the rain and wind finally stopped, the two friends took a look around the forest. Look, Dolly, the wind blew this tree over, Berry said. And the rain washed away my flowers, Dolly sighed. Leapy the grasshopper came rushing in. Dolly, Berry, come quickly, someone's lying in the meadow. The friends found an oil beetle lying in the meadow. Oh, what happened to you? What's your name? Who are you? I'm Adette the oil beetle. I live up in the mountains, but the wind blew me down here and I hit my head really hard. My wings are weak and I can't fly. I don't know how I'm going to get home. The oil beetle sniffled. They lifted Adette up and carried her into Leapy's house. Don't worry, Dolly said eventually. We'll help you get home. That afternoon, Balthazar the bee, Flutter the butterfly and Stanley the stag beetle all came to see Adette. They tried to think of ways to help her get home. The best thing would be a hot air balloon, Stanley said. But what could we use to make a balloon? Berry asked. We could use blankets, pillows and sheets, Flutter suggested. And curtains and towels too, Stanley added. They got to work immediately. They stitched all the blankets, curtains, sheets and towels together. It took a while to get everything finished, but Adette helped as much as she could. Every day she was feeling stronger and even her head had stopped hurting. It's ready! said Stanley. Thank you, the oil beetle replied happily. Hooray! We're flying! Berry exclaimed. Wow, it's beautiful! We can see the whole forest from here! Dolly laughed. It started to get dark. When they eventually arrived, Adette cried out, Hooray! I'm home! Thank you. Please stay the night and watch the shooting stars with me. We'd love to, the little friends said. Adette quickly made them something to eat and gave them delicious cakes and tea. After dinner, they all sat down in front of Adette's house and waited for shooting stars to appear in the night sky. Hooray! I saw a shooting star! Berry exclaimed excitedly. Me too! Dolly said. And me! added Stanley. They went into Adette's house when it got colder and sat and watched the stars through the window. They all made a wish and fell fast asleep. As she slowly drifted to sleep, Adette wished that someday she would meet her new friends again. Berry and Dolly say, what will we learn today? Bubbles Tower. It was a lovely summer afternoon and Bubble the baby beetle decided to play with his colourful building blocks. I'm going to build a tall tower with my blocks, he thought to himself and carried them to a hill nearby. He tipped the bright blocks out of their box in the shade of a big oak tree. As the tower grew, it was harder and harder for Bubble to reach the top. He had to stand on tiptoe and was just reaching for the top when his hand slipped and the tower tumbled to the ground. Oh no, Bubble complained. Now I have to start all over again. <laughs> 
so the baby beetle started again from the beginning. The tower soon began to grow and was very tall indeed. But oh dear, an acorn from the oak tree knocked the baby beetle's tower down. My lovely tower! My tower's ruined again! It was the silly oak tree's fault, he said out loud. So little Bubbles started again, but this time he moved out from under the old oak tree. He was stacking the blocks on top of each other when his friends Berry the Snail, Dolly the Ladybug and Stanley the Stag Beetle came walking over. Wow, you've built a beautiful tower, Bubble, they all said. Yes, it's nearly finished. All I have to do is put the red triangle on the very top. But then the wind blew and toppled his tall tower. Bubble got very angry. I don't believe it. I don't want to build towers anymore. I'm going home. His friends ran after him. Bubble, wait. Why don't we rebuild your tower together? No, I don't want to build towers anymore. You can't build a really high tower with this many blocks anyway, grumbled. He went into his house and slammed the door shut. How can we help Bubble? Dolly puzzled. We've got to think of a way to cheer him up somehow. I know what we can do, Stanley said. I've got another set of building blocks at home. I'll go and fetch them so we can build a really high tower together. That's a super idea. I've a box full of building blocks too. And I'll bring mine. We'll build the tallest tower ever. Berry pulled his blocks in a little trailer. Dolly pushed hers in a wheelbarrow. And Stanley carried his in a big basket. Look, we brought our building blocks. Why don't we build a big tower together? Dolly asked nicely. We could build it in your house so that the wind won't knock it down again, Berry added. Goodness me, look at all those building blocks. We'll be able to build a very big tower with them, the baby beetle said with a smile. Now it's time to pop the red triangle on the top. You should put it on, Bubble, Stanley suggested. Hooray! It's finished! They all shouted together. Then Berry, Dolly and Stanley said goodnight to Bubble. The baby beetle went to bed very happy that night. He stared at the tower until he fell fast asleep. Berry and Dolly say, what will we learn today? Bad dream. It was a stormy night and Berry the little snail was getting ready to go to sleep. He brushed his teeth and jumped into bed. He soon heard a strange noise outside. I suppose it's just the wind. Then he heard the noise again. What could that be? He popped his slippers on and opened the door, but couldn't see a soul. I must be imagining things, he said, and slipped back into bed. But then someone knocked again. Who is that? Berry grumbled. He threw the door open and stared outside. Grub! Come inside. You're so tiny that I didn't see you. What's wrong? I had a bad dream. Can I stay with you for the night? The grub said. Of course you can stay. Berry set to work folding a cardboard box into a bed for the grub. There you go. You can sleep here. And what can I use for a blanket? My hat should do the trick. It 
It's just like a sleeping bag. That's good, Grub. Now get some sleep. I'm very tired. Berry was just dropping off to sleep when the green grub spoke. Can I have the light on, Berry? I'm scared in the dark. The moon's so bright in the sky tonight, there's nothing to be afraid of. Now try and get some sleep. But it's dark, the grub went on. It's not dark. It is dark. Oh, all right. I'll open the curtains and you'll be able to see the moon. The stars are twinkling too. Now let's sleep, Berry complained. The little snail pulled his blanket up to his nose and he was soon fast asleep. But the green grub woke him up again. I'm thirsty. Then have a drink, grub, Berry barked. I can't reach. Please help me, Berry. I only want a drop of water. Thank you. Sleep well. And Berry would have slept well if the green grub hadn't woken him up again. I'm hungry now. It's too late to eat. We'll have breakfast in the morning. But I'm hungry. I've had no supper because of the storm. The grub complained. Thank you. I won't disturb you again. The green grub promised. But he didn't keep his promise. Berry, I can't get to sleep. I'm scared. He said and woke the little snail up again. What are you scared of? Berry asked with an exhausted yawn. I don't know. Please tell me a story that always sends me off to sleep. All right, I will. I'll never be able to get to sleep now anyway. Berry started to tell the tiny grub a story. He told him about the day the kite flew away, how they found the mushroom's cap, how Dr Owl cured his earache, and what the centipede got for Christmas. But the grub hardly heard any of it, because he was soon sound asleep. Berry could at last get to bed. By the time they woke, the storm had passed and the sun was shining. Can you see that picture by my bed? Sometimes I have bad dreams too, and when I do, I think of that fairy. She helps chase all the nasty thoughts and bad dreams away. I'll draw you a picture of something you really like and you can stick it over your bed. Then if you feel sad, you can look at it and you'll soon feel better and the bad dream will float away. The sun. Draw me a picture of the sun. I really like him. He's always smiling. It's really nice. Thank you, said the grub. Stick it on your wall over your bed, Berry said. The grub took the picture with a smile and walked happily home. 